ऑलरेडी स्टूडेंट बिस्मिल्लाम द टॉपिक फॉर टूडे इज रेशोज एनालिसिस सो इन दिस क्वेश्चन वट वी हैव टू डू वी आर ऑलरेडी बींग प्रोवाइडेड विद रेशोज वट वी नीड टू डू वी नीड टू रिवर्स वर्क द रेशोज एंड वी नीड टू प्रिपेयर सेट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट सच एज इनकम स्टेटमेंट और एस एफ पी uh i'm reading the question for you guys the directors of what not limited provided the following information for equity and liabilities as at 1st may 2030 so 1st may 2030 it would be uh, opening balances because it's the it's the first of the date uh, share capital we have 200000 ordinary shares and each share is for half dollar so therefore the share capital value is 100000 200000 shares multiply by 0.5 per share is equal to a uh, nominal value of the shares is $100,000 we have general reserves of 40000 we have retained earnings of negative 40000 now what does this negative 40000 represents beta negative 40000 means it's a retained loss it is not retained profit it is retained loss so therefore the business has been suffering losses in the previous years so therefore we have retained loss of $40,000 we have debentures 10% debentures and debentures is a loan uh probably non current liability at 30 april 2014 that is end of the year inventory was valued at 80000 so therefore it's a closing inventory and this was 100% more than the inventory valuation at 30 april 2013 so therefore the inventory that we had sure. at the end of the year so closing inventory is beta 80000 and this is 100% more than opening inventory therefore the opening inventory must be half of that amount uh, that is 40000 okay if its closing uh, inventory is 100% more than opening then the opening inventory or inventory at the previous year would be 40000 now we have some other information as well given for this year we have inventory turnover 10 times inventory turnover means we have sold the inventory 10 times in this particular year more times we sell the inventory the better it is for the business we have gross profit margin of 40% uh, this means we are earning 40 dollar on each 100 dollar of sales so again a more the merrier gross profit margin operating expenses to sales ratio this means our expenses are 21% to sales so expenses would be it should be lower okay so it is 21% of expenses sorry 21% of revenue uh goes in the expenses then we have admin expenses 140 so this operating expenses include admin as well as selling and distribution so admin expense is one of the part of this operating expense and there would be other expenses such as distribution in company normally expenses are grouped into two categories one is admin and one is selling and distribution or maybe distribution only then we have transfer to general reserve we have transfer 20000 dollar to the general reserve this year we have paid dividend 0.08 per share we have non current asset turnover five times non current asset turnover means that our revenue is five times as compared to the non current assets the book value of non current assets so this means we are generating revenue five times from the non current assets then we have receivables turnover of 40 days this means our customers take on average 40 days to pay us for the debts they owe and payable turnover is 35 days this means we are paying our suppliers 5 days earlier than our customers actually pay us the only current assets were inventory and trade receivables this means there are only two current assets and we do not have cash or bank so therefore the bank would be probably current liability as if it's not current asset then the bank balance would be in the current liability all sales and purchase were on credit basis this is a default assumption if the examiner doesn't mentions that sales is on credit or cash so we would always assume that sales and purchase is on credit unless otherwise stated by the examiner so what we need to do beta we need to prepare in as much detail as possible the income statement for the year ended 30 april so what are we going to do we need to prepare the income statement and how to prepare the income statement for a company uh, it's a what not limited it's a company we would start off with the heading so income statement for the year ended first of all we have sales also known as revenue then if it's there a uh, sales return we would deduct that uh, although it's not there uh, in this question then we have to deduct cost of sales we can skip this less and add we can just write cost of sales as well 
first of all we have opening inventory inventory at start of the year then we need to add purchases then we need to less purchase return if it's there any and if the purchase return is not there and carriage invert is not there we can just skip the, those and move to the closing inventory then we have cost of sale usually we write cost of sale two times once when we write it as a heading and secondly when we write it in front of this uh, this is actually the value of cost of sale if we deduct the revenue and cost of sale we are left with gross profit then after gross profit we have expenses so there are normally two types of expenses in the company uh, with the name of admin or office and selling and distribution uh, then we cannot uh, just calculate profit directly first of all we have profit from operations also known as profit before interest in the company income statement and finally the last value that we need to deduct here is interest so loan or debenture interest would needs to be deducted here and the name of the that is finance cost in the company and finally have final profit known as profit for the year final profit is profit for the year just give me a minute so this is the format for income statement let us just start that what information we do already have first of all we are going to start with uh, whatever information we do have we do not have sales or in cost of sales uh, we only have uh, been given information relating to income statement first of all we have closing inventory and closing inventory but at the end of the year it is clearly written it is 80000 so let us write closing inventory first and the examiner says that this closing inventory is basically 100% more than the inventory at opening okay if this closing inventory is 80000 and this is 100% more than opening inventory so how much opening inventory would we have with opening inventory would be half of that that is it would be 40000 okay so let us see what other information do we have we do not have revenue or purchase or cost of sales we have although one more ratio and it is inventory turnover it is relating to inventory so we would be applying this inventory turnover in order to find this cost of sales now what is the formula for inventory turnover beta inventory turnover formula is cost of sales upon average inventory inventory turnover means that uh, we have turned inventory 10 times this year if we are buying the goods and we are selling them and this process is being repeated for 10 times in this particular year so if inventory turnover is already given as 10 times we do not have a cost of sales why because we do not have the purchase so we can put uh, x uh, instead of cost of sales and then we can find average inventory now how to find average inventory uh, there's a formula for calculating average inventory and that is opening inventory and we need to add closing inventory and then we need to divide it with the two okay opening plus closing divide by two is the formula for average inventory so if we add up both of these and we need to divide it by two so average inventory would be 60,000 and if we have the average inventory now and we have turnover 10 times so can we find this cost of sale it is simple math we need to uh, multiply this equation with that 10 times so 60,000 times 10 would be 600,000 so the cost of sale would be how much cost of sale would be 600,000 okay so the cost of sale it would be 60,000 600,000 sorry so now can we find purchases yes we would start with the cost of sale value and the closing inventory that is usually being deducted would need to be added and the opening inventory that is normally added would need to be subtracted in order to find this purchases now we are done with finding purchase now uh, and next we need to find this gross profit so are we being given any ratio relating to gross profit yes we are being provided with one of the ratio that is gross profit margin now there are two types of percentages to calculate gross profit one is gross profit margin and another one is gross profit markup now what is the difference between the two beta the margin percentage is always applied on sales in order to find gross profit and markup percentage is applied on cost of sales so we are being provided here the margin and margin is applied on what sales but we do not have sales instead we have cost of sales now how can we find cost of sales beta what we need to do uh, we need to convert 
margin percentage into markup percentage in order to find the gross profit and how to convert from margin to markup there is a simple formula for that and the formula is margin upon 100 minus margin now what is this formula used for beta this formula is used to convert the margin percentage into markup percentage from gross profit margin to markup and how much margin do we have margin we have 40 percent so we need to convert this margin to markup the formula would be 40 upon 100 minus 40 would be 60 okay 100 minus 40 would be 60 so 40 upon 60 or two third or 67 percent would be a markup and we need to apply this markup on this cost of sales okay so 40 upon 60 of 600,000 would be 400,000. Now 400,000 is the gross profit. We have successfully converted from margin into markup in order to find this gross profit. So what if we have been provided with a markup and we need to convert the markup into margin. How can we do that? The formula for converting a markup into margin would be markup upon 100 plus markup. This is the formula for converting from markup into margin so you can remember it a uh, mark up up means plus so if you want to go from markup to margin we are going to apply this formula markup upon 100 plus markup and if we have a margin we need to apply this formula so now we do not have sales but we have cost of sales and gross profit if we have bought something for 600,000 and we want to earn a 400,000 profit on that we would obviously would sell for more than its cost if it's cost us 600 and we want to earn a profit of 400 we need to sell it for 1000 okay so if we do the reverse working we would be starting with gross profit and we need to add up the cost of sales in order to find this revenue and revenue is how much it is hundred thousand dollars okay we are done with this so now do we have any ratio for expenses yes we have another ratio for expenses with the name of operating expenses to sales ratio now what are operating expenses in business operating expenses consist of all of the expenses other than interest and tax okay all expenses other than interest and tax would be what would be operating expenses so what we need to do beta we need to add up all of the operating expenses okay so we do not have the total for expenses but we know that operating expenses are 21 percent of revenue and what is our revenue revenue is 1 million so what we need to do we need to apply 21 percent to the revenue in order to find the total operating expenses that is 210,000. so in the company expenses are usually classified by function by function i mean that instead of writing multiple expenses the way we write in sole traders such as rent and irrecoverable debt or admin or maybe a uh, bad debt uh, sorry irrecoverable debt and bad debt means the same thing rent and insurance and wages and electricity and uh, instead of writing all of these expenses by nature we would group all of the expenses into usually two categories and those are administrative expenses and distribution expenses so here as you can see admin expenses already given that is 140,000 so out of the total operating expenses if we have admin expenses of how much 140,000 this would mean uh, the other type of expense would be what other type of expenses would be selling and distribution or maybe only distribution so if we deduct uh, 140 from this the total of expenses we are left with the other type in the company usually there are two group of expenses one is administration uh, all expenses relating to admin or office would come here and all expenses other than that relating to delivery of goods carriage outward uh, would be termed as distribution okay so we are done with all of the expenses now now if we deduct uh, all the operating expenses from the gross profit we would get profit from operations also known as operating profit also known as uh, profit before interest okay so what we need to do we cannot charge uh, finance costs such as interest or tax uh, with other expenses so first of all we would deduct all operating expenses in order to find this operating profit and then finally we need to deduct finance costs with the name of uh, these are finance costs this means a uh, loan or debenture interest so we do we have any loan or debentures here beta we have 10 percent debentures worth 50,000 
so we have taken the loan from maybe general public or big investors such as institutional investors and this is known as debentures if we apply 10% to 50000 uh, we are left with a uh, finance cost that is loan interest 50000 times 10% so this is 5000 so if i deduct a uh, finance cost we would be left with profit for the year and if uh, we also have some tax corporation tax so this profit would be uh, termed as profit before tax and then after that we would be deducting tax uh, it would be usually given as a percentage and we need to apply a percentage on this figure in order to find final profit so this profit if we have tax in this question this profit would not be termed as profit for the year instead it would be known as profit before tax and we need to apply percentage of tax on this this value in order to find the final profit but in this case we do not have any taxes so therefore this is the final profit so after preparing income statement using incomplete information or the ratios the next requirement is to prepare the statement of changes in equity now we have already studied what is the statement of changes in equity means uh, a company cannot make SOFP statement of financial position once they are done making the statement of changes in equity. So all of the equity items, whatever changes that took place during the year are usually written in statement of changes in equity. So there would be different columns for that one is share capital. So there can be two types of share capital, ordinary share capital and preference share capital and ordinary share capital is always there and preference share capital can be there or it cannot be there so in this question we have only one share capital with the name of ordinary share capital then we have general reserve and finally we have retained earning there can be other columns as well such as share premium so first of all we would be starting with opening balance now do we have any opening balances of ordinary share capital yes it's written here we have 200,000 ordinary shares and one share had a nominal or original value of 0.5 so this is the value that we are going to take would be hundred thousand dollars it is the start of the year do we have any general reserve general reserves are reserves that the company has created for maybe rainy days and to cover for future losses to give dividend in the future or to cover for uh, uh, buying non-current assets or expansion of the business this is known as general reserve uh, do we have retained earnings yes we have retained earnings but we have a negative retained earnings so therefore it would be a retained loss so we'd be writing it as a negative value now what items do come here in statement of changes in equity anything uh, that would uh, change our equity values would come here first of all we have profit for the year so we have already done calculating the profit for the year and what is the final profit beta it is 185,000 and profit always goes to retained earning okay if it's a profit for the year it would increase our retained earning and if instead it's a loss for the year it would decrease our retained earning after profit for the year we have transferred to general reserve and how much do we have transferred into the general reserve it's written here in the question we have transferred to general reserve how much funds twenty thousand dollars so the general reserve would go up and which from which account do we need to transfer the reserves uh, to general reserve we would be using retained earning always so retained earning would go down and general reserve would go up so overall this transaction doesn't affect our equity because one item goes up and another uh, account goes down then we have dividend how much dividend we have paid dividend is just like drawings in the sole trader we do drawings but in the company the sh shareholders do not do drawings instead they are being paid dividend okay we have paid dividend 0 0.08 per share and what is the total number of shares we have 200,000 ordinary shares so what we need to do we need to uh, multiply 200,000 shares with 0 0.08 in order to find this total dividend and how much dividend do we have it is $16,000 okay 200,000 multiplied by 0 0.08 its dividend paid now finally we have closing balances uh, as you can see we haven't uh, issued any shares during the year if we have issued new shares during the year then our share capital would go up but in this case we haven't issued any new shares we had journals of 40,000 at the beginning of the year and this year we transferred 20,000 more to it and now we are left with how much 60,000 journals of and finally we have retained earning we had retained loss that is negative value and the profit would decrease that loss and instead it would eliminate our loss and finally we are in positive 
we have transferred some amount to the general job and we have paid dividend and finally we have positive value that is credit value so this is how we make a simple statement of changes in equity and finally what we need to do we need to prepare an sofp statement of financial position previously known as balance no, sheet so normally we make an sofp in three columns but right now i am making in two columns and why is that so if we are not being provided with accumulated depreciation also known as provision for depreciation or provision for doubtful debt then two columns are more than enough but if we have provision for depreciation or provision for doubtful debt then we need to make an sofp in three columns first of all uh, this is based on accounting equation first of all we have assets and we can skip the assets and we can just move to the non current assets and do we have any non current assets already given or do we have any ratio relating to non current assets yes we have a non current asset turnover and turnover is 5 times so what is the formula for nca turnover we can find non current asset with this nca turnover ratio nca turnover non current asset turnover has a formula of uh, sales revenue are uh, divided by net book value of non current assets uh, so we have already been provided with nca turnover and how much is it it is 5 times if nca turnover is 5 times and we already have a revenue and we have already calculated revenue how much is it it is 1 million dollars we have earned a sales revenue of 1 million dollar and we are not sure about how much non current assets we do have and we can write non current assets as x so what we need to do we need to find this x so this will be substituted with this 5 and this would be multiplied and this would be divided so 1 million divided by 5 times would be a non current asset value and the net book value of non current asset is 200000 so this means if we have non current assets of 200000 and we are earning revenue of 1 million dollar so this means we are earning revenue of 5 times of our non current assets okay so more uh, uh, nca turnover uh, ratio is uh, the better it is for the business therefore we are utilizing our assets uh, as efficiently as possible okay so nca turnover uh, shows how efficiently we are using the non current assets in the business in order to generate revenue so we are done with calculating non current assets after non current assets we have current assets and in that we have inventory and as we may be aware that in the sofp we usually have closing inventory so we would be writing closing inventory here that after inventory we have trade receivables and do we have trade receivables here we do not have the value for trade receivables instead we have a trade receivable turnover ratio and what is trade receivable turnover trade receivable turnover also known as receivable collection period this means that how long does it take on average for the customers to pay us the amount due okay so receivable turnover formula is trade receivables divide by credit sales into 365 because there are 365 days in a year and instead if you want to find the trade receivable turnover not in days but in months so then we need to apply multiply it by 12 months or if we are required to calculate for weeks then we need to apply it uh, multiply it by 52 weeks 52 weeks because there are uh, 52 weeks in a particular year so receivable turnover is already given as 40 days we do not have the trade receivable account receivable value we need to put x uh, instead of that and we have credit sales uh, it's written all of the sales as credit we have already calculated the sales and income statement and it to multiply it with 365 now what we need to do we need to find this x value and this is trade receivables and how to find this x value beta the x would be isolated and the 365 that is being multiplied would be divided uh, when goes the other side of the equation and this 1 million dollar that is being divided would be multiplied when goes to the other side of the equation so 40 upon 365 times 1 million so if we uh, solve this equation we are left with trade receivable value and that is 109 sorry 109 alhamdulillah 589 109 589 is trade receivables so we are done calculating the trade receivable with the help of trade receivable turnover now the question here mentioned that only current assets were inventory and trade receivables so therefore we are sure that we do not have a bank balance here instead the bank balance would be a balancing figure 
uh, when calculating uh, current liabilities okay it would be a bank overdraft so we just need to add up these current assets and the non current assets plus current assets would be a total of assets so we are done calculating one part of the accounting equation that is assets part after assets would come capital and liabilities and how to write capital in here uh, as if company when we are making company accounts uh, and normally if you remember uh, if we solve a sole trader question or maybe a manufacturing question the capital is calculated as opening capital at profit for the year less drawing and if we are uh, making account for a partnership instead of writing opening capital at profit less drawing we write capital accounts and current accounts in a partnership but uh, when we are making accounts of a company we would write uh, equity and reserves instead of writing opening capital at profit uh, less drawing or capital account and current account we would write equity and reserve and in equity and reserve all of these values would come uh, that we have already calculated while uh, making a society statement of changes in equity this would be share capital we would be writing all of the closing values for share capital general reserve and retained earning for all of these we would write closing values but the important thing is that for share capital we would write the complete value that is written here and what is the name for share capital that is written here in the question it is written 200000 ordinary shares of dollar 0.5 each so we would be writing the same line 200000 shares of 0.5 each we cannot skip this part this is important that in company you need to write the complete information for shareholders so shareholders know that how many shares are there and how uh, what was the uh, nominal value for each share that is the original value that we had when we issued the shares in the first place so the value of these shares were 100000 then we have general reserve again it would be closing value of general reserve we have already found it while preparing society statement of changes in equity then after general reserve beta we have retained earnings and this is also the closing value if we add up all of these values so the total for equity and reserves this have a special name and the name of that is total shareholder funds now this name is important examiner usually award one mark to write this name total shareholder funds so instead of writing equity uh, and reserves or total equity we would write total shareholder funds we are done with assets and capital and finally we have liability we have normally two types of liabilities one is non current liability and another one is current liability so how much non current liability we do have we have a non current liability of debentures 10% debentures okay so we would be writing 10% debentures and that is $50000 okay 10% debentures $50000 after non current liability finally we have current liabilities and in current liabilities we usually have trade payables so are we being provided with the trade payables or any information relating to trade payables now uh, i am highlighting therefore it's easy for me to see that which values we haven't used yet uh, we have a trade payable turnover ratio given uh, as if a uh, 35 days this means we pay our supplier in how many days on average 35 days so previously we used receivable turnover ratio in order to find trade receivables now we'll be using payable turnover ratio in order to find this trade payables now what is the formula for that the formula is trade payables upon credit purchase instead of credit sales into 365 now what is trade payable uh, turnover payable days is already given and how much is it it is 35 days trade payable turnover is 35 days trade payable uh, we are going to write x instead of it and credit purchase we are assuming all of the purchase are on credit it's already written and what was the purchase that we calculated while preparing income statement it was 640000 okay we are done with finding purchases so we'd be writing purchase here in the formula of trade payable turnover and 365 why because there are 365 days in a particular year so now we need to find this x and how to calculate this x we just need to isolate the x and we need to move these two items to the other side of the equation uh, the thing that is being multiplied 365 would be divided and the thing that is divided would be multiplied that is 640000 so we are done with finding trade payables and trade payable is 61370 dollar and finally we need a bank overdraft and how can we find bank overdraft 
so we will be using accounting equation and what does accounting equation says that assets minus capital is equal to liability now uh, the originally the accounting equation says that assets is equal to capital plus liability so if we deduct the capital part from the assets we are left with liability so the total of assets is this if we deduct uh, shareholder funds then we are left with total liabilities okay and if we deduct non current liability as well then we are left with what current liability so if we deduct uh, capital uh, and non current liability both from this asset value then we are left with the total of current liabilities and the total for current liabilities is 70589 so we usually we have two current liabilities one uh, uh, as trade payables and another one as bank overdraft so if we deduct the trade payable part from the total of current liabilities we are left with what bank overdraft and the examiner clearly mentions that Uh, the bank balance uh, is not in the current assets, and the only current assets are inventory and receivables. Therefore, uh, the current uh, the bank would be a current liability, and it would be a balancing figure, and we can find this way. So, I hope, dear students, you are able to understand this. How we calculate, uh, how we prepare income statement using the ratios information that is given in the question.